Hey guys, welcome to my channel, That Groomer Guy with Jonathan David. Today we are going to be talking about washing cats. So not a lot of cats like to get washed. They don't like bathing, a lot of them don't like water, and a lot of people don't like to groom them. But if you're someone who grooms cats, or if you have a cat, or if you intend to groom cats, I wanted to give you some tips that I have found that have really helped um, a lot of training from the, the beginning goes a long way. So I'm going to use my cat here. This is Abina. And Abina is an Abyssinian cat. And she is uh, she's going on about nine years old now. And I've had her since she was a kitten. And I knew that I was going to bathe her on a regular basis because I wanted to avoid a lot of shedding in my home. So I wanted to get her used to water and get her used to this whole process so that she would accept it and be willing to get it done because I bathe her about every other week and I de-shed her coat. So I'm just gonna show you some of the things. Um, it's a fallacy, it's, a, it's really not true that cats don't like water and that uh, you can't get them to like it. She actually does like water and she has gotten used to this. I started when she was 12 weeks old and I did her on a weekly basis to get her used to this. First I start with a loop and I put it around like a sash under one arm and around the neck kind of like a little safety harness. And I did get her used to water at an early age. I recommend using warm water. Good girl, Avina. And not putting the water on very high, keeping it on a lower setting. That's a good girl. And you can see that I've gotten her used to water to the point that when I spray her with the water, she actually likes the way it feels on her back. Kind of like petting her. So I've made this a really fun and positive experience. She likes the way the water feels on her. And I don't blast her in the face with the water. I make sure that I just let it kind of trickle out around her face. And I use my hand to distribute the water around her body. Get her nice and wet. Make sure her coat is completely saturated. And I don't use conditioner on her. I only use a, a shampoo. Uh, the conditioner tends to make her hair very greasy. It would be a little bit different if you were use, if you were doing other breeds of cat, but most cats don't need conditioners like that unless they're long haired. And I'm putting the shampoo on, and I'm gonna avoid getting it around her eyes, but I'll go all the way up close to her ears and I'm massaging that shampoo into her coat, getting her bum here nice and clean. I do express her glands from time to time, but I don't do it every time because they don't fill up quite like a dog's and they don't need to be done quite as um, frequently as a dog. But I really get in there and I'm I like to make sure that I get in her underarms here. I get the underside because she lays out on the balcony and gets dirty. And um, I like to make sure I clean in between her toes. I like to make sure I get all of this nice and clean because she's in her litter box and she's stepping in the litter and it's dirty and I don't want it to track germs through the house. So I like to make sure she's nice and clean. I get her tail. And I'm just massaging the shampoo in. And I've always done this with her where I make it nice. It's like a little massage. And you can see she's not rejecting this at all. She really likes this and it's a really nice bonding experience between she and I. So if you get them used to it from an early age, you can really avoid a lot of those problems. Um, so if you have clients that want to bring their cats to you, um, if they're getting a kitten, start them early. If they're an adult cat and they're already, you know, they have an aversion to it, it's a little bit of a harder, a harder task, but if you can get them used to it from an early age, I would, I would highly recommend trying that. All right, now I'm gonna start rinsing her. I'm gonna start up at her head here, and I'm just gonna let that water, yeah, I know. Let that water kind of run down the back of her neck. Get this shampoo away from her cheeks. and let the water just kind of run over her. She loves the feeling of this warm water on her back. 
So if she starts to get a little fidgety or a little anxious at all, I go right back to the parts that she loves, which is having this sprayed back here because it feels really good. And then I go back to the areas that she doesn't love, like around her face. And I cut the water in my hand and really try to get that shampoo off from around her ears and her face. I make sure that I rinse completely down her legs, the whole tail. I want to make sure I get everything on this side. And it's really important that you get all the shampoo out because it's going to leave them greasy and it's going to irritate the skin if you leave it in and they'll get dry flaky skin and they'll start scratching a lot. I make sure I get in between her legs, make sure I get all that shampoo out, her feet. Make sure I get that chest really, really well. And I'm going to stand her up and just make sure I rinse everything from underneath. And you can see because I got her used to this from an early age, none of this is scary for her, none of this is uncomfortable, and she actually likes the feeling of the water on her body. She is thoroughly rinsed now. I'm just gonna get out any excess water in her coat here. And I'm just gonna start towel drying her. And I'm gonna get as much of that water off with the towels. And you can see she cooperates just like a dog. I mean, she's so good for this because I've gotten her so used to it from a young age, knowing that I wanted to bathe her on a regular basis. And I've always treated her gently and kindly when I do this, and it's paid off because now she loves it. And it's part of our routine and she doesn't cry and she doesn't try to jump out of the tub and get away. She actually likes it. And actually at home, if you leave the shower door open, she likes to go in and she plays with the water. So, just show you that not every cat hates water. All right, we're gonna put her in a kennel to dry for a little bit with a cage dryer for just for a couple of minutes to get some of the excess water off. And then we're gonna show you how we blow dry. All right, guys, so we're back with Abina here. She was bathed and I towel dried her and I let her drip dry for a little while in the kennel. And now I'm gonna blow dry her. So you can use a force dryer on cats on a lower setting. Um, she doesn't really love the force dryer so much, so I'm not gonna use it. I'm gonna use a handheld blow dryer, like a professional beauty blow dryer. And I put her in the loop like a seat belt. It's like a sash, it goes across the chest and under one arm and it's tight down. She won't jump off because she's used to this, but sometimes if you do this with a crisscross pattern, it holds the cat on the table securely, and there's harnesses you can use as well. So for her, I'm just gonna actually use this on a warm setting, and I'm gonna blow dry her, and you can see how much she actually enjoys it.
All right, she is dry. And I think now I'm gonna take her out of the loop and I'm gonna brush all her undercoat out. If you have a cat that's not really good, I would recommend keeping them harnessed up, but she's really good for this part. She loves this and I'm gonna show you. Now I take a rubber brush because that's what's best to remove this kind of hair. It's got these soft rubber blunt rounded tips on it. And I'm gonna start brushing her and you're gonna see all the, all the hair that actually starts to come out of her. And this is the de-shedding process because I do this after the bath. You can see how much coat comes out. And this really helps to get all the dead coat out. Everything that she would normally shed and drop all around my home is now gonna come out with the brush. So in actuality, when I'm home, very little hair comes out of her and I have almost no hair on my furniture or anything like that. Um, I'm a real stickler for shedding. I keep a very neat home, so I do this on a regular basis and it keeps her from shedding, keeps her skin and coat nice and healthy and shiny and it helps her to feel her best. All right, here we are. I'm all finished brushing her. You can see a lot of her hair that was ready to shed out. This is coat that would have fallen out on its own. I helped take it out with the brush. She's nice and shiny and smooth and she feels good and she looks good and now she won't shed in my house. So that's how you do a cat. If you can train them from an early age, you can have them behave like this and they won't necessarily be your worst nightmare. So look at her, she even loves rubbing on the grooming arm. Well, thank you guys so much for watching another episode of That Groomer Guy with Jonathan David. Thanks for watching, and if you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give me thumbs ups. And if you want to comment anything, comment below.